Hi and welcome to this week's episode of my Tomorrow D Chow Chow blog. I'm Ronnie Sadler and this week I'll be explaining Chow Chow colours to you. The Chow Chow breed has six official colours according to the Kennel Club. These are red, black, cream, blue and fawn and our very own unicorn, white. There are variations in these colours of course and I will explain these for you. I think it's important to note that colour changes a lot from birth all the way through to the adult cult coming through and indeed as they age. I will show you pictures that show you the coat's colours from puppies into adulthood. My aim is to help you to both recognise and understand the colours in the Chow Chow breed. Sadly, I know of people who have been caught out when buying puppies because they either don't know the colours or they do not know how to identify them. In some cases, this could be because the seller, and I'm not going to say breeder here, as I don't think that's the right title, just doesn't know enough about what they're talking about to identify the colours of their puppies. Or more worryingly, it's in an effort to charge more for a rare colour. Red is split into two main categories. The first is the shaded red, and this is the most common colour seen. When the coat is shaded, it means there is a lighter undercoat colour. The lighter areas can be found in their ruffs, shoulders, heads, tails and in their leg furnishings. The dog can have almost white hairs underneath to a golden honey cream. They can also have a few dark hairs, usually to the face and the tail, but the guard hairs are always red. This red can be from the palest honey colour to a dark mahogany red. The pigment with a shaded red should be black. This means that the skin around the nose, eyes and mouth, including the flues, should all be black. The tongue should be a dark bluish black. Self-reds. Self-reds are less common than the shaded reds. Their colour is exactly the same as the shaded reds, but they don't have any of the paler shading and are the same colour throughout. This can be from a light honey colour all the way through to a dark orangutan orange. The pigment with the self-red should also be black. This means the black around the nose, the flues, which are the skin hanging down around the mouth, indeed the mouth and gums, around the eyes and the nose should all be black and the tongue, that lovely bluish black colour that we all associate with the chow. It is practically impossible to identify the difference between a shaded red puppy and a self-red puppy at birth. And indeed, this can last months into the puppy's life. Just like our blondes, creams have a range of colours. These can be anywhere from a rich creamy red all the way through to almost white. But in all circumstances, a cream chow chow should have the darker points, which are typically biscuit to apricot in colour and can be found at the ears and in the joints of the legs. Currently, the fashion seems to be for the paler white ones. However, these are undoubtedly almost impossible to keep clean. The pigment on a cream is ideally black However, a paler nose is permissible, though black is preferred. A cream's mouth will be paler than those of a black or dark red due to their natural dilution, especially seen in the gums. However, it is still important that the dog's pigment should be blue to blackish in colour with the blue blackish tongue still. Whites. A white chow chow is our unicorn. And according to the breed experts I've spoken to, no one has actually seen a true white. To qualify as a white, the coat should be bright white all over, with no red points. The pigment should be totally black, especially around the nose and the eyes, and this colour should not lighten with age. This colouring would be much similar to a dog like a Samoyed. Many people, including those new to the breed, seem to wrongly register their puppies as a white when in fact they are actually a cream. Black dogs are black. They have black pigment so as with the reds their mouths, eyes, noses and flues should all be black. Their tongues will be the darkish bluish black colour. However black chows can have lighter hairs in their undercoats. 
These are either a reddish rust colour or a silver white grey. These show particularly around the neck, shoulders and in the furnishings at the back of the dog. The rust colour can also show on the tips of your black chow chow's hair. This is typically caused by your chow enjoying being out in the sunshine. This lightens the hair. This can make them look a chocolatey colour but they are definitely black. This change seems to be more pronounced just before the chow blows its coat and once that process has happened they return to their normal black colour. Black chow chow puppies in particular seem to have this rust colour and are often mistaken for chocolates. This of course is a colour not recognised in our breed. What is a dilute? A dilute, as suggested, is the diluted form of a colour. So in blacks the dilute is blue and in red the dilute form is fawn. Dilution is a naturally occurring mutation of a gene. The mutation causing colour dilution is recessive, so to produce a dilute puppy the dog must have received two copies of the mutated gene from its parents. If two dogs are bred together that do not carry dilute, it is impossible to produce dilute puppies. If two dilutes are bred together, the resulting puppies can only be dilute. If you breed a dilute to a dilute carrier, the puppies will be given, over percentages now, 50-50 to non-dilutes and dilutes. But all puppies will be dilute carriers, so they can pass that along to the next generation. So on to blues. Blues are the dilute of black. Blues are a velvety steel blue to a grey colour. They, like the blacks, can have the silver, white to grey undercoats or the reddish rust colour. The pigment should always be a dark bluish black. Slightly paler than the blacks is allowed due to them being dilute. Blues, just before they blow their coats, and as young puppies, can look a muddy brown colour. But if you pair the hair away from the skin, you will see the lovely blue colour at the root. Fawns, or as Americans like to call them cinnamons, also have a lot of variation in their colours. They can be a really pale biscuit all the way through to a dark red cinnamon. The colour is often confused with reds, especially the shaded red. However, the fawn has a silver blue undertone, which is much paler than the reds. This is best seen near the nose, where the colour is the most obvious. They can be pale in the face or have a beautiful silvery blue mask. You can usually tell if a fawn is going to be lighter or darker as an adult by its colour as a young puppy. They can look almost silver pale when they're born. The pigment should still be the dark bluish black around the eyes, nose, mouth and flues and of course the tongue should still be the bluish black. Non-standard colours. So for those of you who are still with me, this is probably going to ruffle a few feathers. There has been a surge over the last decade or so of non-standard colours being introduced into breeds. Now I know many of you are thinking, what's the problem? It's only a colour. And I do get that, but... To breed these non-standard colours, you are playing a very dangerous game. To make these colours, you are breeding with only one thing in mind, and that is colour. This means you are no longer selecting dogs on their merits, such as their adherence to breed standards, their temperament, or their health. I've been reliably told that in many cases, and not just chows, to get these colours, breeders started to mate fathers to daughters, brothers to sisters, etc. to bring the colour gene to the forefront. So what is the purpose of this? Is it for the betterment of the breed? Because sadly, I highly doubt it. No, it's normally in the name of greed. As we, human beings, like to think that our dog is just slightly more special than everybody else's, these breeders are capitalising on that by introducing new colours. But at what cost? If you see a chow that is a merle, it's not a full chow. Despite what these breeders are saying, it has been crossed with something. Admittedly, this could have been a few generations ago, but they are the result of a cross. 
it's usually something like an Australian Shepherd or a Bulldog or something similar. Merle is not a naturally occurring mutation like the dilutes are. Now this is where it gets trickier. This is because the next colour has been made to occur naturally in a very unnatural way. So chocolate. Chocolate has come about basically from bad breeding. When a good breeder is selecting dogs to mate, it is always recommended that you do not breed two dilutes together. Or if you do, you ensure that the resulting puppies, if to be bred, are bred to non-dilute colours. This is to ensure that they keep their pigment, i.e. those lovely black-blue tongues that are so distinctive of our breed. The chocolate colour has occurred when breeders have bred blue to blue to blue over lots of generations with no other colours added. The gene mutates, but in the wrong way, and you are left with a dog that is brown in colour with a pink nose and tongue and not blue. Lilac and champagnes are very similar. They are the results of breeding dilutes to dilutes over many generations. So these dogs lose type and pigment, but what else do they bring to the breed? I will discuss this in a later episode. Please, please, if you are looking for a chow, do not be duped into buying a rare colour. We have five beautiful colours already in existence and you don't need to look for a rare one to have a very special dog. My email address is tomorrowd at hotmail.com and the website is www.tomorrowdkennels.co.uk. Many thanks and I hope you've enjoyed. Or you can reach me on any of my social media accounts, all of which are listed here for you. Thank you for watching this episode of my Chow Chow vlog. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below. Or you can reach me on any of my social media accounts, all of which are listed here for you.